joining us now with his reaction to this and the latest developments also in the European credit talks is Peter Tanis. He's author of the book Debt Deficits and the Demise of the European Economy. He's also president, not of the European, of the American economy. He is also a president of Lynx Investment Advisor. I guess, Peter, that's going to be your next book because you could certainly write that. Um, let's talk about the U.S. first. The president seems to be hopeful on a bipartisan plan here. Do you agree that that will get done? I agree that we're, we have every right to be hopeful, Carol, but let me put it this way. We all knew, or we should have known, that there wasn't going to be a debt ceiling uh, situation where we ran into a default. Uh, they are not that irresponsible. What we were hoping for was the Band-Aid Plan B, where they simply raised the debt ceiling and then kept on talking. What seems to be happening is a much bigger deal, a $3.7 trillion deal. Mm -hmm. And that means that the politicians have stopped acting like politicians and are acting more like statesmen. So I think the market reaction was appropriate and we should hope for the best. Is it enough, though, in your view? You've written about this uh, extensively. Yeah. No, it's going to take an awful lot to cure the problem here in the U.S., uh, our deficits are over a trillion dollars a year. Uh, the federal debt is out of control. And yes, uh, it's going to take a major, major effort. And we can only hope that the part of my book called The Demise of the American Economy will prove not true. You've also talked about, I believe, in your book that we kind of need a 9-11 crisis to find a solution here to deal with the U.S. deficit uh, and the debt load longer term. Uh, remind us again what that 9-11 event might be in your view. Is it a default at some point? Is it a downgrade by S&P or Moody's or whatever? Now, our best guess is the financial 9-11 that will get us serious about solving this problem is much more likely to be an event like a failed treasury auction. For example, remember that during QE2, the Fed was the buyer of two-thirds of all treasuries. Mm -hmm. Now, if the Fed has gone away, the, the buyers have to be replaced, and most of those new buyers are going to be foreigners, the Chinese being the largest of them. It is possible that at one point, the major buyers of our treasury say, we're sorry. You know, it was very nice for the Fed to drive down interest rates to ridiculously low levels, right. but we're not buying them here, so jack them up. Peter, you talk about failed auctions potentially here in the United States. Let's talk about Europe because they've come awfully close uh, with auctions. Um, I, I, we talked about Europe a lot with Jim Grant as well yesterday. I mean, he talked about the U.S. situation. He's worried about it, but he says the real crisis is in Europe. Listen up. The gold standard clearly um, is, 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 is a better alternative for monetary management. That, you know, his, the, to me, the historical evidence is incontrovertible. We, we, have, we, we today are, are submitting to the regime of people so well intended, but people who are printing money mm -hmm. for reasons that mostly they, I think they imagine. Well, and that's not exactly what we wanted to uh, play for everybody. He talks about, uh, Jim Grath talks about going back to the gold standard uh, here in the United States and how that would be key. But he did talk about uh, Europe and saying uh, that the crisis is um, a bottleneck here, but that Europe is a substantive, uh, substantive difficulty uh, that is indeed coming to a crisis. When you look at Europe, Peter, it seems like they can't come to a solution. There's so much fighting between the countries, between the European Central Bank, between Germany specifically. Um, how do you see this one playing out? All right, let, let's talk about specifically where the problem in Europe is. But allow me to say, too, that on the clip that you just played, uh, I, we're never going back to the gold standard, but everybody should own gold. Mm -hmm. However, the crisis in Europe today is focused on, here's a fact, Greece cannot pay its debt, it will default. What's really spooking the people in Europe is what happens when Greece does default or a technical default is, is declared and all the credit default swaps come due. Remember the credit right. default swaps are the insurance policies against Greek debt. The problem is we don't know how many are out there. Some people have opinions, but they don't know either. There could be a mass of these things that all come due at the same time, and there is real concern that we could have a Lehman or even worse, an AIG moment when all of these things have to be paid off. So 
But with that risk out there, that unknown out there, Peter, I mean, don't you think the European officials get it and they're going to figure out something, that they've got to figure out something? Although, contrary to kind of what we see, the headlines keep, keep coming out that it, it seems to be no solution coming for uh, Europe at this point. Well, they are talking about an interesting solution that they're going to talk about more day after tomorrow, mm. which is the idea of issuing euro bonds guaranteed by all of the European countries together who are part of the eurozone. Uh, those bonds would sell very well. But at the end of the day, Germany is going to be paying the price for them because people are going to be banking on Germans, Germany's credit, not Italy's or Greece's or Ireland's. So the problem with this solution is that the only lender to the poor countries will be this European Union, and they're going to demand very, very strict controls on the use of the funds. Right. Here you raise the prospect of possible civil unrest, which is not pleasant. Meantime, as we wait, we see a jump in financing costs for Spanish, uh, for Spain, I should say, and the like, and it just continues Indeed. on. Peter, we got to run. Peter Tanis, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Good being with you, Carol. Well,